Here we go. Won't you listen to reason? Well, you open your eyes. It's a wonder what you'll find with an open mind. You may be surprised. Yeah. We'll go ahead and jump into callers. We've got, is it Pinky? Yes. Hey, how are you? Hi, hi, Matt. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Um, By the way, there, there's like something weird to... going on. Are you on a cell phone? Yes. Okay, I'm just. I'm. Well, I can hear you. There's some kind of weird noise, and typically we find it happens with cell phones. So if you if you would, and especially since we got a shorter show, if you can go ahead and get to um, kind of summarize or ask a question, and we'll go ahead and take it offline. They're losing their whole life. It, they tend to feel like. It, I don't have this. How am I going to live? Yeah. Is my reason to live. Yeah, we we've had people actually call into the sh to the show before to express that very thing. You know, if there if there was no God, why would I get up in the morning? And uh, I I've ranted against that on a number of occasions. I know that there are people who feel that way. Um, I don't know what else we can do about it other than to keep you know challenging them, pe challenging people, and educating people. Um, this idea that. I mean, Christianity in particular, in some varieties, uh, in, encourage this idea that you are useless, useless and worthless and that your only point is to, you know, uh, serve and worship, et cetera. So if you actually buy into that wholeheartedly, when you get around to figuring out that uh, there's no good reason to think that it's true and plenty of reasons to think that it's false, yeah, that's that can be worldview shattering. Um, the, about the only thing that, you know, I can really say is that it's 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 very sad. I, there's no magic, you know, solution to this. There's no simple thing, other than to get people to to kind of raise their consciousness so that they have a better understanding of the value of life. That the, their life is just as valuable today as it was the day before. It's like uh, I, it's people who've been falsely diagnosed with a terminal illness, mm -hmm. and then they find out that they don't have this terminal illness. Um, you would think that that would be something that would make people go, hooray, you know, I get to keep living. Uh, but it is it is still a, a, in some cases they probably do. In other cases, there may be depression or, and, and, a, and a sense of loss. That, you know, the, the direction that they had taken their life was based on something that wasn't true and that, you know, they'd made false assumptions, etc. So, yeah, I don't... I don't have any easy answers to that other than, yeah, it happens, and all we can do is keep working to educate people. And, you know, it, as I said before, the people who do good things in the name of their religion, for example, the people who go down and, and feed the homeless, um, I think those people are probably still going to do that, even if they give up their religion, because it's who they are, and it has nothing, the, nothing to do with the, the truth of whether there's some magical being out there. Um, I went through something, a really dark night of the soul, the minute I realized um, that there was no God, I didn't have this atheist, um, you know, a whole fellowship and um, understanding to fall back on. So for um, those few days, those weeks, whatever that time period was, I, I felt like my life was over. I didn't know where to go from here. And it, was, it took a lot of strength to try and build myself and, you know, think, um, no, there is a tomorrow. There, um, uh, what, can I, what will I do with my life without Jesus? Uh, anything I want, you know. Yeah. But yeah. It, it takes it takes that sort of strength to um, do that, and a lot of times you find a lot of discouragement with uh, you know people uh, in the church, and then you also have rejection from in the church, uh, maybe your family members, and so you know I, I I don't know, but a lot of these songs are at the heart of it, and I I don't know maybe there's like you know some. Um, yeah, I, I think that the, I think that the songs are are particularly. I, I'm glad you know Tracy brought it up. Others have brought it up as well. Uh, I'm I'm glad people are starting to you know recognize that and harp on that because I remember um, everything I ever learned from Schoolhouse Rock. Wow. Music has a, a way of insidiously sticking in your brain and never going away, and reinforcing ideas. And when you use it to reinforce ideas that simply aren't true, that are actually damaging. Um, I, it's just, it's worse than any sermon. Mm -hmm. It's because you're not actually focusing on the words. It's not, you know, I'm not going to go off on the, you know, the subliminal messages and other, other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it has a way of, of becoming memorable and, 
I, and what you remember, what all of those little ideas change the way your brain works, change what changes what you think. Yeah. Well, the, you know, one of the interesting things about this coming out of some religious belief and and you know this feeling of of loss. Um, the interesting thing is that when people contact us at the Atheist Experience to talk about losing their religion, I don't think we've gotten a single email from someone that said, oh damn, I don't believe in God, I don't know what to do with myself anymore. Yeah. At some you know, point or another, it actually, it, 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 well, maybe it's the people who have killed themselves that we don't hear from, and we hear from the people who actually yeah. feel liberated and get on. I'm going to go ahead and move on to, to other callers since we're short on time today, but thanks a lot for, for mentioning that. Okay. Bye-bye.